Hello everybody, welcome to my studio, the North Star Studio in Ithaca, New York. Uh, I'm bringing to you a final stage of a uh, still life painting. Uh, let me turn the music down a little bit here. First. Um, the last time I did one of these still lifes uh, video presentations, I was showing you the early stage and I'm doing the very final touches on this uh, painting here now. And I'm just kind of punching up some um, of the lights here on the uh, on the grass on the lawn outside of our window for this uh, still life and uh, come down here to my uh, palette here <clears throat> I have this um, really neat color that's right out of the tube it's kind of a, a lime green and I'm mixing it with a little bit of uh, Naples yellow and a little bit of white to get this it's a very warm light value uh, green and just a tad of uh, cadmium yellow. And that's just about perfect for what I was uh, doing here. I just wanted a, a value that was a little bit lighter and about the same uh, temperature to kind of accentuate this uh, sunlit uh, lawn here. I'm applying the paint like I often do uh, at these stages in kind of short uh, choppy strokes to, uh, it's sort of related to pastel, so we can uh, see the, uh, the brush strokes show through. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch to a, a detail area here now. Let me show you a little bit of, uh, of detail here. If you can come up here closer and uh, I'm going to be working on these um, these uh, flowers here, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, lighten up the shadow area of these um, daffodils, and come down here to my palette. Uh, I'm going to mix up a. Uh, I guess I'll use this other brush here. I'm going to mix up a uh, a light uh, warm color for the uh, shadow. And to do that, I've got kind of a gray color in here, but it's going to be a warm gray, so I'm putting a little bit of uh, Naples yellow in there to warm it. It's still gray, but it's going to be warm. And right now they're kind of cool. Let's test it out here. It's just about perfect for what I wanted. And you can probably see some of the undertone. There's a um, kind of a uh, raw sienna undertone that's coming through here. And I'm just uh, kind of restating and going over these uh, flower uh, petals here to uh, bring out these little uh, forms in them. And one thing with, with painting in general is always comparing the, uh, the figure ground relationship. And so what I'm doing here right now is uh, accentuating the figure ground relationship of uh, of the light and dark. And overall, it's uh, um, lighting, lightening them up here a little bit. Overall. And another thing is uh, softening the uh, the edges. Here's Gracie. Show Gracie. Our lab of chair came in to offer her opinion. <laughs> what do you think, Grace? Good job. Okay, come back to the painting here. Gracie has a cameo appearance here in the video. Okay, I think that's uh, about all I wanted to do. Um, with the uh, statue here, I've used a variety of uh, colors with cool in the shadows and, uh, and uh, as long as I've got this warm color here, I'm gonna just, it's a warm shadow here. And, the, and that lip there, um, it was reflecting light back up into the uh, upper lip there. Okay, if you step back a little bit, I'm gonna explain a little bit about the uh, architectonics of the painting and the, uh, and the perspective uh, that's uh, involved here. 
it's basically a two-point perspective uh, that I'm using here. And the vanishing point, one of the vanishing points is going to be way up here. And the, you can tell that by following these perspective lines, which are called orthogonals. And they lead up about to where my mall stick is ending. So that's one vanishing point. And then there's another vanishing point it would be way off here, about 10, 12 feet over this way. So these uh, <coughs> perspective lines are all leading this way and converging up here in the eye levels uh, up here someplace. And the sidewalk here in the background, that's leading up to it. And I don't know if I told you, but the, the working title for the uh, painting is uh, Ornithology because of the, uh, of the bird feeder out here with the little uh, black capped chickadee. And then there's a shadow of another bird here, maybe a red-winged blackbird. We see them there sometimes too. Uh, but back to the perspective thing, there's also another perspective that could be happening here, which would be going down this way, with, of these corners of these uh, of the table here, and it would be going down because I'm looking at the still life from above. So theoretically, there's another uh, vanishing point uh, way down here below the uh, canvas, and. Uh, Another thing with a perspective that I did was um, I straightened out these, um, these vertical lines. The uh, camera that I used uh, distorted it, even though it wasn't a, uh, a wide angle lens, it still made these uh, perspective lines flay out this way, flay out and splay out. So I just corrected everything to make it vertical. So I had to do some adjusting there. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you the uh, early stages of this painting. I have them here on the um, computer back here. And hopefully it will come up. Whoops. <laughs> Not coming up. Okay, here they are. So if you come in close, this is what the paint, painting looked like in the uh, in the beginning stages of the uh, painting here, and um, you can actually see the um, structure of it and the uh, um, perspective a little more clearly here with all these uh, orthogonal lines a little more visible than they are in the painting. And uh, if you go ahead to the next one here. Okay, so here it is at the second stage, and you can see the, uh, uh, I'm starting with the lights. One can start wherever and uh, work around. Sometimes I start with the darkest darks and work up. Other times it's kind of a mixing around. And uh, okay, if you go to the next one. This is as, as it's progressing along a little bit further here, where I'm starting to add in the shadows, working the lights and darks simultaneously. So now if you come back to the painting, I'm gonna explain a few more things about it here. Um, I'm gonna explain about the light. That's <clears throat> sort of the main thing that attracted me to the, to the painting, was the different types of light. It has this wonderful uh, late afternoon light that's coming in and creating this uh, network and this pattern of shadows and light. But it also has this uh, cool light that's coming in, kind of an ambient light here, coming in from the outside windows. And there's even a reflected light, this warm light that's bouncing up from the, uh, the warm floor to the, uh, to the uh, tablecloth here that's leaning over. And this is kind of a convention, if you come in here, that a lot of still life uh, painters from the uh, uh, Dutch Golden Age used was this uh, knife kind of leaning over and the uh, part of the still life kind of uh, coming over the edge there like that. I think Caravaggio used it in, uh, in one uh, painting of his. Okay, so to wrap up here, I'm going to um, explain about some of these other uh, still lifes that I have here. I have this large one that I did quite a few years ago. And in fact, it was the uh, centerpiece for my show at the Everhart Museum in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And it's what I call a, um, a hybrid painting and it, uh, I call it a hybrid because it includes a riverscape with a still life. And the way that I did this was uh, I set the still life up in my studio and uh, did the uh, background, the landscape from a, uh, a photograph. And so it's kind of a, a combination of blending of two different genres. And uh, also point out, I have this uh, 
a backbone in here. And that's kind of a, a convention of uh, still light painting too in the, the Dutch Golden Age. And they, the uh, purpose of it was to uh, accentuate or bring out the brevity of life by showing uh, uh, skulls. There's the usual convention of the vanitas. And, uh, and to show that with perishable things like pears and flowers. Okay, if you come down to this one, this is one I did quite a few years ago too. And it's also a uh, self-portrait, believe it or not. If you come in close to this, uh, this uh, vase here, this vase, there's a little bit of a self-portrait right there of me reflected, sort of like an M.C. Escher kind of a painting there. And this also includes the backbone. And over here to the left is, uh, if you move over to the left, it's painting over here. This is a recent still life, uh, which also includes the uh, late afternoon light. And then uh, a couple more here. This one, Gracie's Guardy. <laughs> it's a, another kind of hybrid of painting here. And uh, if you come in a little closer to it, it's a, a hybrid because it's combining a townscape with a, uh, a still life. And it's in the uh, townscape is my hometown, Wyalusing, Pennsylvania. So I have a lot of uh, history here. Growing up here, over here was the, uh, the manse, the house of the, uh, of the Presbyterian minister. And this was a lot here. This is a telephone building and we used to play football and, and uh, baseball in there when I was a kid. So it has a lot of history to me. And this last one that I'll show you is another hybrid. This is also a, a hybrid in the sense that it's a mixed media painting. And um, it's a uh, view of the Susquehanna River. But if you go in close to it, and uh, you'll see the, uh, the figures on the left there, it's a, uh, an interpretation of the famous painting by William Adolph Bouguereau. It's in the Park Institute in, uh, in the Williamstown, Mass. Okay, so <clears throat> here's my uh, my little uh, talk on uh, still light painting, and um, I hope you enjoy it. If you come to the North Star Gallery later this year, we're not sure exactly when it's going to be, maybe in the summer or the fall, we'll have a special exhibit of uh, still light paintings, and you can see them on, on the website, northstarartgallery.com. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this, hope it inspired you, and I hope that... Uh, you, uh, if you're a painter, that it uh, inspires you to do some still life painting. Okay, thanks so much for your attention.